then started with a really interesting opening sequence here where he's created this digital like computer sort of DNA particle effect. To create this effect, I would say this is most definitely done using something like Red Giant's Particular, or you could even use something like the Boris FX Continuum software, and I'll link to both of those in the description below if you wanna learn more about those, but a really interesting and a different start to this video. I also like how it also connects to this opening shot here, or this bird's eye drone shot here, where they seamlessly sort of transition together. Now, before we move on, if you haven't watched Ben TK's Hong Kong video, check that out via the link in the description below before you watch the rest of this video. Here, Ben's added a digital neon sign here in the foreground, and this can be done by firstly tracking the scene, creating a 3D camera, so you can track or even using the 2D tracker inside of After Effects to track onto a surface. And then he's created this, basically what you're seeing here as a white solid with the text and the shapes that he wants. And then to get the glow effect over the top, what he's done is use the glow effect built into After Effects, or he could have even used a plugin to layer over the top and get that glowing effect. This would also have to be one of my favorite transitions here, where he's got a drone shot sort of panning up as he's flying sort of horizontally between two buildings. And as he's panning up, he's motion tracked in a second drone shot, which is a bird's eye shot looking down on a street. And as it seamlessly transitions from one to the next, the camera then starts to pan up. So in the second shot, he would have started with a bird's eye shot looking down on the road, and then he's panning up the gimbal. And in the first shot, he's flying down the road and then panning the camera up. And then to put those two together, what he's done here is he's motion tracked that second shot into his first shot. He's then drawn a mask, which goes around the edge of these buildings here. And then as the camera pans through, we're then fully transitioned into that next shot. I absolutely love this shot because I just think it's so clever in the way it's been done, but it also looks super seamless in the way that he's transitioned the two shots together. He's also weaved together a storyline of him trying to find a meet up with JR over in Hong Kong. And while they're trying to find each other, he's got a series of these really nice hyperlapses or sped up gimbal shots as he's moving through the city. So we've looked at these before. These are when you get your gimbal and you basically use the POV mode and then you're basically walking or in this case he's on a train looking out a window. And then you speed these up in post and add motion blur over the top to give it that really sped up effect. Here we got some really clean masking techniques, again, which Ben is famous for, where the camera is panning down, and then we get a white transition of this object in the foreground or this rail as it's transitioning between the two shots. This is exactly one of the techniques that I show you how to do in my Motion Effects Pro course for the new module that will be coming this year. Now I've had a lot of requests from you guys in the community to see a breakdown of this Hong Kong video. And if you have other videos that you wanna see, let me know in the comment section below and I can look at making those into a video as well. Another thing that we always notice Ben TK doing is he's constantly moving that camera. And I think you can learn a lot from watching his videos and seeing how he's using the gimbal to really move the camera and the audience through the scene. It may seem simple just to pick up a gimbal and go and grab some moving shots, but you've got to think about the subject and the way you're moving your camera through the scene. And one thing that Ben TK is doing in particular with his gimbal shots is he's either using a tighter lens or he's zooming in a little bit on the camera and then panning around someone to give it that little bit of a parallax where the background's moving at a different rate to the things in the foreground. Here we have another really nice hyperlapse or sped up gimbal shot through the street to then transition into this scene where they're meeting. And again, we've got the camera that's wrapping around our subject. In this case, because Ben's in the shot, I would say that Jamie is most likely filming this shot. But you can see the way that he's moving that camera around the scene 
kind of wrapping the camera around just makes it look a lot more dynamic and much more interesting. One thing I've noticed that he's doing in this video, which he doesn't normally do, or you don't really see a lot of in these travel videos, is the use of motion graphics. Now here, he's using the text message effect to pop up and he's motion tracked it into his scene using a 3D camera. But the other little thing that just the attention to detail and this is really where you can see just at that level of creativity, you can see it is panning down over the aspect ratio, the black bar that's at the bottom of the screen here. It's kind of breaking that fourth wall and just makes it a little bit more interesting. And when I'm talking about motion graphics, I'm talking about things like text or these little icon things that pop up like these text message effects or icons, anything that's like text-based or computer generated. Most of this stuff that we're talking about here is video effects, which is different from motion graphics. This is another one of my favorite transitions where we have a nighttime time-lapse, which is transitioning into a daytime time-lapse. And then we transition using a warp zoom back past Ben and JR. So having a closer look at this, the simplest way to get this is just by putting the camera on a tripod and locking it off. You don't want the camera moving because it just makes it much more complicated to get a time-lapse effect unless you have a motion control rig. But I would say this has just been put on a tripod. He's then filmed a nighttime time-lapse from this position. Then he's also come back during the day and filmed from the same position a daytime time lapse. Also keep in mind with this effect, the tripod doesn't have to be in the exact same position. You can be slightly off, but it just means that you're going to have to crop in on both of those shots and then line them up. And to line them up, you're looking for things in the side of the building here, or you're looking for anywhere you're getting straight lines that is, makes it easy to match those two shots together. Then he's put a digital zoom over the top, and then we transition into a third shot, which is a warp zoom back past JR and Ben TK here, to reveal the location. So overall, it just looks really smooth. And the other little thing that he's added here, which just adds that little attention to detail, is all those camera movements. We're gonna have a look at that a bit closer in another part of this video. Here we've got another really seamless transition from the train into this next shot here. So that's a masking technique where you're drawing a mask along the edge of two walls and then moving the camera across. The thing to remember with those two is the hardest thing is matching the speed. So the speed doesn't have to be exactly the same, but if you can move your gimbal roughly at the same speed, it'll make this a lot easier. Otherwise, you can just use a little bit of speed ramping or slow the shot down or even speed it up just to help match those two shots together. In this part, we're getting a lot of those really classic Ben TK speed ramping effects. And after studying a lot of his videos, this is something that he just does really, really well. I would say this is almost signature to Ben TK. I've seen a lot of people do speed ramping, but I personally think that Ben TK just has that attention to detail just to make it super smooth. And that's really what separates his speed ramping from the rest of the speed ramping effects I've seen. This time-lapse effect here was something that really stood out to me because it's a time-lapse that has that camera movement in it as it's zooming in. And this is something that we've touched on in a previous video where I showed you how to create that sort of handheld movement. If you haven't watched that video, I've also linked to that in the description below. Now you can do that in the computer, and that's something that we're going to look at closer in my up and coming module for my Motion Effects Pro course. This is another great shot here where the camera appears to be flying through a building and out the other side. And this is called 3D projection mapping. And it's essentially where you're taking still images of say a corridor or a texture, and you're compiling them together in a three-dimensional space and, for, and moving a 3D camera through that scene. And it gives the illusion like you're flying through a 3D corridor. As we pause it in this corridor, you can see we have the basis of a 3D projection map scene where we have this corridor made up of four different walls or surfaces that have been laid out in front of a 3D camera and the camera is then animated moving through that scene. Then we have more of that awesome 3D camera shake over the top as we're transitioning between these shots. And the video finally finishes here with some really amazing drone shots 
over Hong Kong. So there you go, guys. There's my breakdown on Ben TK's Hong Kong video. You can check his video out via the link in the description below. If you like this video, you can also give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And you can check out similar videos to this where I break down other videos Ben TK's done in this playlist here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.